What's up guys? It's Brad at Yamaha Marine Center. We finally got some logos on our trucks. Imagine that. It only took like four years. Anyway, Yamaha Marine Center, 1515 Wells Road in Orange Park, right across the street from Adam at Carly Davidson on 295 in the beautiful town of Orange Park, Florida. Today, we have a 2022 Regulator 25. Uh, this one's fairly well equipped. We did the F-250s on this one instead of the 200s. White painted engines. Uh, Laguna Blue. White Armstrong bracket. Here, let's just show you. That way I don't have to go through all the different options. But MSRP on this guy is 257 350 uh, Does not include the trailer. Check with their local dealer for pricing. As everybody's going to be different if they have inventory. All right. Now to the nuts and bolts of the boat itself. Unfortunately, this one did just sell and that's why we're doing this video. The gentleman that purchased it, I'm just gonna make him sit through all my normal nonsense. All right. <clears throat> I don't, well, there's no good comparisons. We've got a bunch of little boats next to us, but the reason I love the regulator so much is because they're probably the most ocean going vessel that we offer in our lineup. Uh, so super steep entry up front. Uh, big, huge lifting strakes uh, run all the way down the boat, and you'll get an idea of that in the back. And then the reverse china on this boat is ridiculous. Um, and then also the flare give you a pretty good idea how far it sticks out right there, because uh, it's amazing. If you do end up blowing by that reverse china, uh, that flare is going to take care of just about anything you need taken care of as far as shedding water uh, in the right direction and not back into the boat. <clears throat> this one is 25 feet 2 inches on the fiberglass and 30 feet exactly when you add the Armstrong and the engines back there. Beam is 810. Uh, we've got a pretty decent clearance inside the head as well. It's 74 inches, so we'll show you that when we get in there. Uh, dry weight, 8,330 pounds, 160 gallons of fuel. Dead rise is 24 degrees in the back, and like I said, you can see uh, it's a lot steeper up front. Uh, it doesn't taper very much, which is why they maintain this narrower beam to keep that, that good running angle going through the water to handle those heavy offshore conditions. Because this is definitely the boat I'd want to be in if, if it was a snotty day out and I didn't want to pick my days. Uh, the rest of the stuff, 20 gallon freshwater tank, uh, 46 gallon uh, live well in the transom. And then uh, got all kinds of options we can do to the boat. We've equipped these fairly well, just like I showed you that sheet. This has the through stem windlass, tucks up nice in there walk down the whole side everything on the boat drains overboard too so you'll see a bunch of these uh drains all over the place Boop, right there and then that one's for like the fish box there's another one on the other side and then we have our fuel vents freshwater tank vent and then coming back to that armstrong bracket huge trim tabs big scupper flaps for the self bailing cockpit and then there is that 24 degree dead rise all the way in the back and you can see how steep uh, let me get right in the middle how steep of an angle it maintains all the way through the boat um, and then the Armstrong you can see the gap between the two it allows uh, the water to rise a little faster so then we don't have to run as aggressive of a position on the engines uh, to, to increase drag so it gets the engines up nice and high and they can bite fresh clean water which gives the whole really nice efficiency once it's up and running and then the, the, the Armstrong actually functions several different ways it acts like a trim tab so as you're floating and you come off a plane, it gives you buoyancy in the back. So that's why we can run these twin 250s on the boat the size with as much weight that's on it. And then as it's planing, it acts like a giant trim tab. And you can also use these to help to get the boat on plane. And then when it's up and running, <clears throat> that Armstrong is completely out of the water. So again, you get a lot of rise coming off the hull into the anti-cavitation plates on the engine. So it gives it a really nice bite. And this is a new cowling on the 250s with the digital electronic steering. So the thing is set up and ready to go. If you wanted to add autopilot and joystick, it gets pretty easy and relatively inexpensive as compared to what it used to be. Sorry about the condition of the boat. A uh, lot guy was supposed to be washing, but we've had rain very, almost every day last week. But coming into the boat, you do have a boarding ladder here. Make sure that this detent is, is pretty strong. I've seen these things kind of release and then the ladder comes out and then bends the ladder. And they won't, I don't think they'll cover that under warranty. Really good company with warranty, but stuff like that, sometimes they don't. Uh, as far as the rest of the systems on the boat, Regular is a phenomenal company to work with. We're pretty blessed to have them as a franchise. 
Uh, entry to the boat is through this transom access door. There is no tuna door side door. Uh, if you know anything about regulator, they won't do anything to compromise the ride quality of the boat. So they'd rather focus on the structure underneath the boat to give you that legendary ride and not focus on all the gimmicks and widgets and stuff that you can throw on the boat to make it look pretty and keep up with the Joneses. Uh, big hoss pipes to get to your cleats and everything you know being a three-piece boat it's nice to have this cap because then there's room underneath for rigging if you want to put cool lights stuff like that and then there's that self bailing cockpit uh, with the uh, little channel down here so all the water goes goes out the self bailing cockpit and uh, doesn't stay in the boat until it goes to the bottom uh, rod holders I believe these are blue water gem lux maybe Another hoss pipe midship, and then we have a pop-up cleat forward, but it's definitely a fishing boat, and they did this in mind of it being a fishing boat. That way you don't have any exposed hardware above to snag lines and stuff. I mean, even the grab rail is recessed up front as you walk around the boat. Uh, tackle center, got some storage here, plenty of room for a cooler, and then fold down transom seat. Uh, backrest doesn't pop up or anything, so that it's a little low, hits you a little low in the back, but the seat does fold out. I can't do it with one hand. Really need to get somebody to film me. But that's a nice ride as you're headed out. And then into the bilge. Everything's nice and clean, no liner. Actually, I think that is a liner in this one, yeah. Because there's the wall. They didn't do a liner on the XO series, sorry about that. But yeah, nice clean liner. Everything's finished well. You can see your transducer there, uh, your bilge pump with float switch, your raw water pump. Uh, you got everything else mounted up on the wall there your fuel filters uh fresh water pump i believe is back here as well so everything's easy to access uh, up under the bridge here so as water you know if water does overtake the gasket these are all gasketed and they dog down uh, when you close them it'll suck it close so the gasket will hopefully seal and you can see all the crud around here again sorry it's dirty but if water does get through, it's not going to drip on your pumps and stuff like that. So, pretty cool stuff. What else? Um, no fold-down armrests on here, but it does curve in nicely. I actually prefer the seating position of this one. I'm not a big person by any means, but the seating position is pretty nice. That flip-down footrest, you have a footrest here, and then chart pocket for storage, glove box, with your USB outlets, you got a light in there. And as I was saying, the new DES stuff, so it's all fly-by-wire at the helm and at the binnacle. So to add autopilot, uh, we just changed the BCU, the boat control unit. We put the Yamaha autopilot in, and then we can also do a joystick if you want to do that as well. Which if you're going to do both, it's better to do them at the same time because if we do the autopilot, <clears throat> we have to change the boat control unit. And if we do the joystick, we have to put another boat control unit in it. So just a little, little thing. VHF remote mic is down here on the corner. Get it out of the way so you don't have cords in the way. New CL5 uh, tilt trim. It's all touchscreen. This is the newest gauge. People are running out of them now, so it's nice to have it on this boat. And then all your other stuff is here. Uh, we did the PDI. Both engines are broken in 2.7 hours. So that's all good. And this is where you adjust your steering friction, trim assist, your lock to lock. You can set. Uh, lower speeds the engines turn quicker so when you're at the marina higher speeds they turn slower and give you more friction really cool system uh, and then of course the 16 inch Garmin all the typical Garmin stuff on there we also have a whiskey compass and then we got your vent nice bokeh switches on here all backlit so as you turn them on you can see they light up and if we have a multi-position switch like the vent push it once and then hold it to go out, push it again, turns red, hold it, and it'll come in. Pretty neat stuff. This is another company, you know, we saw Pursuit, Regulator Cravel, Parker, Key West, and uh, Regulator's another company that over-engineers their product, so it's really an engineering company that tends to, that, not tends, that builds boats. Um, six speakers, I think, maybe four on this system. So it's all fusion stuff. Uh, well, we got a raw water wash down there, forgot about that. The little hose holder. So it comes with two hoses, one for your raw, one for your fresh. Another hose holder there, another fusion speaker. Uh, 
waste pump out, gas fill, and then our freshwater fill is over here. Coming down into the head, you get a couple of flexi teak steps to get you down there, holding tank, and then your battery switches, and then access to all your stuff. Uh, Garmin's, you can see all the rigging in there, nice and clean, easy to get to. See the digital steering, no more hydraulics, Yamaha bus, power, batteries are nice and tucked up in here, windless breaker. Uh, there's your overboard discharge, and the control for your overboard discharge is in there, so you have to flip it from um, pump out to discharge. And coming forward on the boat, huge bow area. Uh, another seat forward, fold down armrest, cooler underneath there, again drains overboard, uh, nice cushions, removable, easy to remove, that way if you're not going to use them, get them out of the way. These are also insulated boxes, so if you want to use this extra fish box space, uh, you can definitely do that. Again, they drain overboard. This is your only macerated box down here on the floor, but it's huge and it also functions as a rod holder if you're not using like fish box because you have that locking uh, tab but that's it, it's big I mean probably fit just about any wahoo in there dolphin tuna all that good stuff another storage box up here this is normally if we end up putting a trolling motor on it we'll put lithiums and put them right up in here since they don't weigh much and they don't take up that much room and it's real convenient to rig it from here to the bow <coughs> So we have some 84 and 96 inch rodans and then coming forward to the anchor locker you got a uh, nylon snubber because they only put uh, chain road on these now it's 120 feet of chain I believe so your scope is like flat lays right down anchoring's a cinch but if you have any other questions Give us a call, 904-644-7631, or get us on the website, yamahamarinejax.com, ymcjax.com, one of those two, I think they all work, but thanks.